Hello, I'm Matthias. I'm data scientist at Clario, and today I'll be talking about the work that we've been doing about anomaly detection for microservice-based applications on our platforms. So whenever you think about anomaly detection on our platforms, um, we are dealing with, first of all, a plethora of metrics with a dashboard that has a lot of visualizations, a lot of colors about um, thresholds that are exceeding or in a normal range. Um, and it is really stressful to look at and very difficult um, to see what is actually going on. But why are we making those dashboards? Um, actually, um, within our platform, um, it is a multi-tenant based platform. So there are a lot of applications running on this platform. And to give you a small example, um, we've made a sports application in which um, we have four different components. The first component is a device simulator that simulates um, data that is flowing into our, um, into our platform. And it, um, the data we, um, is flowing in um, through our MQTT connectors. So um, we do not only have a device simulator, but also a core component on our platform to provide MQTT tokens um, and an MQTT broker, of course, as well. So we already have two components there. Um, then the data that is flowing into our platform is first cleaned. And this data uh, is coming from Kafka. So we have uh, uh, some Kafka metrics as well. And then this data is further processed down the line by means of the processor. Um, and then the processed data is visualized um, in our dashboard. And again, the dashboard is connected through MQTT. So also there, the MQTT broker and MQTT token provider um, is, um, is available there and uh, gives us metrics as well. So this whole application has a lot of metrics, uh, CPU, RAM, NetIO, BlockIO, the number of PIDs, the number of tokens provided. So um, we have a lot of data for that one specific application, but also the core components um, that are driving that application on our platform. So the SRE team and also all the people that are um, looking at that dashboard are confronted with a lot of data and it's not easy um, to see some specific things or anomalies. So we were thinking, um, what can we do differently? Can we work without thresholds? Because there are five specific things that are not uh, working out if you're using thresholds. The first one is by using thresholds, you, um, you're not actually using the interaction effects that you know and the context that you know for your whole application. You're just using simple thresholds for all the microservices that build up the application. The second one is um, we are in a high dynamic changing condition. Um, so all of a sudden there can be a burst of messages. So it's very difficult to define uh, a good threshold because sometimes it overshoots or undershoots a lot. So it's very difficult to have those thresholds uh, clearly defined. A third factor is that we have a plethora of tenants and applications. So if we would build a dashboard that is scalable for the SRE, SRE team to manage, um, it is really difficult to see um, what is happening where and if there is anomaly that is arising. The, third, for the fourth thing sorry, is um, that we have fast emerging components as well. So the development goes very fast, and sometimes there are new features that are added, and we have to extend or upscale um, some components, and the thresholds are higher or lower. So e each time we have to check those thresholds. So, and that brings me to the fifth part. We do not have automatic implementation of those thresholds. It's really the user that knows how this microservice behaves that has to set those thresholds. So we thought of... How can we get rid of these thresholds? Is there another way we can do this or we can handle this problem? Well, yes, there is. Um, we can build, for instance, a neural network or, um, or a machine learning algorithm that stays, that states based on uh, a training of historical data if there is an anomalous event, yes or no. The problem with that is you need a lot of label data. We have a lot of label data. Um, we have a lot of data coming from all these applications. But the problem is, first of all, you have to label them if there's an anomalous event, yes or no. And the second problem is 
most of the times these anomalous events are very uh, scarce. So you have not a lot of anomalous events. So actually you have very unbalanced data. And it's hard to work with unbalanced data because you are more because the model that you've trained is more biased um, to predict the class that is yeah um, that has the upper hand in the um, the data set. So that was the first uh, thing that you could do. Um, actually predict anomalous event, yes or no. The second thing that you can do, and that we are actually developing at Clario, is we want to have a neural network that predicts the next step of time series. So if you have a, an application that gives a lot of metrics, then we want to predict the next time step of all those metrics, the values. And we know that it doesn't give us anomalous events, yes or no, but it already gives us um, some measures that we can further process to know if there's an anomalous event. Here you can see the workflow that we've been using uh, to do so. So if we have a trained neural network, and it's based on LSTMs, so these are large, long short-term memory cells that are cascading to build a neural network, then actually we can um, make a neural network that uh, predicts us the new uh, time series um, for this um, application. And once we have these predicted time series and we compare them with the normal time series that we see, then we can come and we, uh, we um, subtract them, then we have an idea about the error vectors of that. Once we have the error vectors and we know the probability density function of these error vectors, then we can see well, is this an anomaly, um, anomalous event, yes or no? So um, these, um, the power density function of these error vectors, uh, we get that through power um, spectrum density estimation. So we are working very hard on that to fine tune um, all these uh, components in this workflow um, to have a, a unified um, workflow in order to not only have um, a specific trained neural network for one application, but a generic model to build it for all the applications that are running on that platform. Um, so instead of having um, an, a flow in which some people have to define thresholds, we have now a flow that all the data that is coming from those microservices um, are being captured, are stored, are uh, processed um, through a Spark cluster with TensorFlow, uh, and that gives us um, a trained neural network based on LST LSTM network um, to provide if there is an anomalous event, yes or no. So in such a way, we've been building an automatic live anomaly detector. And in the next video, we'll go um, much deeper in um, what LSTMs are specifically and give you a demo of, um, of a specific application for which an LSTM was trained and where we can um, see anomalous events, um, yes or no. Okay, thank you for um, your attention. See you in the next video.